Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our release of second quarter 2023 performance results for FDIC insured institutions. Despite the period of stress earlier this year, the banking industry continues to be resilient. In the second quarter, key banking industry metrics were favorable. Net income remained high by historical measures, asset quality metrics were stable, and the industry remained well capitalized. But banks reported tightening net interest margins and funding pressures for a second consecutive quarter. In the second quarter, the banking industry's net income was $70.8 billion. That's an increase of $9 billion from the first quarter. But after excluding non-recurring accounting gains on failed bank acquisitions that occurred in the first and the second quarters of this year, net income was roughly flat from the prior quarter and, in fact, from the fourth quarter of 2022 as well. This adjusted level of net income does remain relatively high by historical measures and was 5.7% higher than the same quarter one year ago. For community banks, second quarter net income increased from the prior quarter as higher non-interest income and lower losses on the sale of securities more than offset lower net interest income and higher non-interest expense. Community bank net income also improved relative to a year ago. The industry's net interest margin declined for the second, qu second straight quarter, though by a lower amount than last quarter. Although the interest rates earned on loans increased more than the rates paid on deposits, the interest rates banks paid on non-deposit liabilities, such as federal home loan bank advances and borrowings from the Federal Reserve's bank term funding program, increased by a larger amount, pushing up the overall cost of funds for the industry. Community banks reported the same increase in deposit costs as the industry, but reported a lower increase in loan yields, which contributed to a greater decline in the net interest margin, in their net interest margin than for the industry as a whole. In the second quarter, total deposits declined for the fifth consecutive quarter. However, deposit outflows moderated substantially from the large outflows reported last quarter when the industry experienced significant stress and two regional banks failed. The level of liquid assets declined in the second quarter through a combination of greater pledging of securities and a decline of liquid assets such as cash and securities, though most of the increase in pledging activity was for prudent liquidity contingency planning. The deposit insurance fund balance was $117 billion on June 30th. That's up about $900 million from the end of the first quarter. The reserve ratio, that's the fund balance relative to insured deposits, decreased by one basis point to 1.1% as insured deposits increased at a rate slightly higher than the diff balance. Despite the decline in the second quarter, the reserve ratio currently remains on track to reach the 1.35% minimum reserve ratio by the statutory deadline of September 2028. After declining in the prior two quarters, unrealized losses unavailable for sale and held to maturity securities increased from the prior quarter to $558.4 billion. Higher market interest rates caused market values for debt to generally fall during the second quarter, resulting in higher unrealized losses. So, though the, though the U.S. economy has so far remained on solid footing, the banking industry continues to face significant downside risks from the effects of inflation, rising market interest rates, and geopolitical uncertainty. These risks could cause credit quality and profitability to weaken, potentially resulting in a further tightening of loan underwriting, slower loan growth, 
higher provision expenses, and liquidity constraints. In addition, commercial real estate portfolios face challenges from higher interest rates when loans mature, and office properties are experiencing weak demand for space and softening property values. These issues, together with funding and earnings pressures, will continue to be matters of supervisory attention by the FDIC. Now that's my overview of this report on second quarter results. You have my full statement for the record that goes through all of these matters in considerable detail. There are, however, two charts from my full statement that I'd like to uh, draw to your attention. First, chart 8, which shows that um, it provides the quarterly changes in loan balances. Chart 8 shows that loan growth has normalized over the past two quarters after the large spike in lending that occurred last year. Total loans increased by $86.5 billion during the quarter, or 0.7%. An increase in credit card balances and loans to non-depository institutions offset declines in commercial and industrial and auto lending. Despite the moderation in lending during the first two quarters of 2023, the banking industry still reported annual loan growth of 4.5% from the previous year. The growth was led by higher one to four family residential mortgages, consumer loans, and non-farm, non-residential commercial real estate mortgages. Community banks reported stronger loan growth in the industry, increasing 2.6% quarter over quarter and 12.5% year over year. One to four family residential and non-farm, non-residential commercial real estate loan mortgages drove annual loan growth for community banks. Despite the relatively robust loan growth reported over the past year, recent surveys do indicate that loan demand is declining and underwriting standards are tightening, which may hinder growth rates in the coming quarters. And second, I'd like to draw your attention to chart 12, which is the quarterly change in deposits. And chart 12 shows that deposits declined for a fifth consecutive quarter. Total deposits were $18.6 trillion. That's down 0.5% over the quarter. That's a reduction, that's a reduction from the 2.5% decline reported in the first quarter. In the second quarter, we observed the continuation of the trend in which customers are actively seeking higher yields. Lower earning accounts, such as transaction, money market deposit, and other savings accounts declined by $412.8 billion during the quarter, while time deposits increased by $306.7 billion. Broker deposits increased by $177.4 billion, or 17.3% during the quarter. In the second quarter, Uninsured de deposits declined by 2.5%. That is far less than the 8% decline reported in the first quarter. By contrast, insured deposits increased by 0.8% during the second quarter, driven by higher insured broker deposits and reciprocal deposits. Now, there has been a good deal of discussion about deposit flows between the nation's larger banks, primarily under the assumption that deposits have flowed from regional banks to the largest banks. While deposit balances may have suggested that such flows occurred on a limited basis toward the end of the first quarter, that does not appear to have been the case in the second quarter. The nation's global systemically important banks reported a 1.2% quarterly decline in total deposits in the second quarter, primarily driven by a 3% decline in uninsured deposits. 
rather than a simple story of deposits flowing to the largest banks, the second quarter's deposit story appears to have been more about pricing pressures from depositors seeking higher yields, often at non-bank financial institutions, particularly money market mutual funds. So that concludes my uh, prepared statement for this morning, and I'd be glad to answer uh, any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll now turn to your questions, and our first question comes from Zach Warmbrot uh, at Politico. Go ahead, Zach. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Um, I was wondering if you could talk more about uh, what you're hearing from banks uh, about their outlook for credit in the coming months. I'm just curious if there's any more color you have on where we are in any potential credit crunch post SVB. Thanks. Hey, Zach, um, just stand by. We're uh, getting some audio uh, feedback. So we just want to clear that up and I'll ask that you re ask your question. So just hold for a second. Okay, Zach, please go ahead. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thanks for my, taking my question. Um, uh, could you talk about what you're hearing from banks about their outlook for credit in the coming months? Is, is there any more color you have on where we are in any kind of credit crunch post SVB? Beyond what I, can you hear? Whoa. Are we okay? Can you hear me okay, Zach? Well, now I can't hear you again. So, But if you can hear me, I wouldn't, you know, go beyond uh, what I had in my prepared statement on um, on loan balances. We we have. Can you all see me and hear me? Um, I wouldn't go beyond what I said in the prepared statement, which is that you know lending has held up in the second quarter uh, at a slower pace than last year, but still um, still substantial. Um, but we are getting reports from surveys, from surveys of banks that um, uh, that uh, standards, lending standards are tightening and that we you know, may see a tightening of credit availability in coming months, but I wouldn't you know, want to go beyond uh, what those broad surveys are, are currently indicating. Thanks, Zach. Um, Tanga Johnson from Bloomberg. Hi, Chair Bloomberg. Thanks so much for uh, uh, making time for, the, for us today. Quick question just around the liquidity levels at banks. I'm wondering if, um, in addition to you know, measures that uh, the FJC has issued around capital and other concerns, whether uh, you're, you're sort of worried at all about liquidity levels at bank and their own sort of planning in this area, are there things that maybe quietly otherwise that CFDIC is asking. We know that and we've reported that, that other agencies, including the Fed, are doing this. Is this something that, that your agency is doing as well? Well, uh, certainly um, monitoring liquidity risk at our institutions uh, is a, is a uh, as I indicated, a focus of our, has been and continues to be a focus of supervisory attention. And as, as the second quarter results indicated, uh, there has been a significant slowdown in um, uh, loss of uninsured deposits by the industry, and insured deposits have actually continued to increase. So I think there has been you know, some improvement and stabilization in the liquidity situation. Uh, but for the reasons you know I discussed in uh, in my statement, it's it's a subject of of close to close attention on a on a supervisory basis. Our next question is from Victoria Guida at Politico. Go ahead, Victoria. 
Hey, Mr. Chairman, thanks for doing this. Um, just wanted to ask, um, you know, the, the regulators have talked about um, potentially updating liquidity rules um, for, for regional banks. And I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about, um, you know, where you are in that process and what you, um, you know, what you what you're going to be look at it, looking at improving as you think about how to update those. Tori, I think it's a little early to talk in specifics. I do think given um, the liquidity risks that became evident earlier this year, uh, that will be a focus of attention, including the liquidity coverage ratio, which is short-term liquidity standards in the net stable funding ratio, ratio which is longer-term uh, liquidity standards. Uh, but beyond saying I think that and other matters relating to liquidity uh, will be a subject of review and possible action by the agencies on both a supervisory basis and a regulatory basis. I don't think we're far enough along at this point for, you know, for me to say much more than that. Thank you. Again, please use the raise your hand function if you have a question. Uh, Katanga's hand was up again first, so we'll we'll go back to Katanga. Go ahead. Yeah, just, just curious about whether, uh, and, and the report kind of spells it out a bit, but it seems like unrealized losses on securities got worse this this quarter. I don't know if there's any more you wanted to share on how concerning that is for you and maybe ways that that might be addressed um, in the reforms that, that the agencies are considering, considering moving forward. The levels of unrealized losses um, on the balance sheets of our banks are high. I wouldn't, you know, it does tend to fluctuate from uh, quarter to quarter. So in the, I believe in the um, third quarter of last year, they were higher. Um, and it really follows the pattern of interest rates. They declined somewhat in the fourth quarter of last year and the first quarter of this year. Now bumped up again um, with a rise in interest rates. So I think the quarter to quarter, sh shift here is perhaps not that meaningful. The overall level, uh, you know, re re remains high and a source of risk. And um, certainly a matter of attention on a supervisory basis. And of course, one of the um, matters addressed in the uh, Basel III capital rule is to propose that um, unrealized losses on available for sale securities uh, be recognized in the capital of banking institutions down to $100 billion. Uh, that would be a, effectively a strengthening of the capital banks would have to hold against those unrealized losses, which, which we think would be quite beneficial and certainly quite relevant, you know, given the experience uh, earlier this year. Abrama Santos-Sané from American Banker. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, Chairman Grunberg, do you have an updated estimate as to when a joint CRA final rule could be coming? I'd, I'd better be careful, but I would venture to say that it will be in the very near future. Thanks. Gina Heeb at Wall Street Journal. Gina. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, I was just wondering if you're at all concerned about the increase in broker deposits and potential concentrations at, at some of the smaller banks. I think that's a matter of supervisory attention for us. Uh, there has been a significant increase in broker deposits uh, in the banking system over the past year. Um, and uh, they can present liquidity risk. And, you know, for the industry as a whole, it's still a relatively modest 7% of total deposits, but it can vary considerably from institution to institution, as you suggest. And 
and concentrations of broker deposits, you know, would be would be a matter of supervisory attention. Abraham, I see your hand is still up. Did you have a another question? Maybe not. I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Great. Seeing no other questions, um, we will conclude the live stream and press briefing here, but senior staff do and will remain online uh, to answer any questions about the financial results. And again, reach out to media requests at FDIC.gov if you have any additional questions or follow up to today's briefing. Thank you all for joining. Yeah, thanks to everybody. Very much appreciate it.